Okay, so we're going to have a quick look at a mini kiln. Uh, some of the things we have to repair require soldering wires that, uh, either with very high temperature solder, uh, ideally silver solder, um, and that's been an issue even with a uh, micro oxyacetylene uh, torch. The uh, flame is so hot, even preheating the elements, they do tend to uh, crack. So a colleague has tried a kiln and uh, has had some pretty good results. So we thought we'd uh, get one and uh, have a go ourselves. saying top because it's actually lying on its back. So let's get this open. Well, this particular kiln will go up to a thousand degrees centigrade. The silver solder obviously is uh, lower than that. So it's certainly capable of doing it, and obviously it can be used for many other crafting purposes, glass, um, ceramics, all sorts of uh, people might use uh, one of these, but uh, we just need that high heat for the burning wires, oh god we've got stuff everywhere. Okay, so let's uh, just pop that door open. Okay, so we've got a small chamber there. We've got a thermistor sat in there. You can probably see the heating element at the back. Inside here, we have two ceramic shelves with a ceramic cover for the top ventilation hole. Okay, let's have a look at that. Okay, so... Um, sure what you're supposed to do with that. It's <laughs> a different machine, it just sits on the top. If you don't need the ventilation hole. Now the instructions were all downloaded from the website and I'll link to that and uh, let's just have a, a little look. So you've got an interlock switch here. is all adjusted to seal the door relatively square not exactly right now we've got a controller here um, so we can set the temperature uh, the time to stay at that temperature and various other things yeah, 
pretty solid. Okay, I was expecting a normal kettle lead, but it's actually reattached. We've got a test certificate on the side, oh, test label on the side. And there's, a, there's the address of the company board. Actually, it's made in the UK. Now, that's interesting. Um, so 230 plus or minus 10%. Uh, highest temperature at the top is 1000 degrees. W equals 900. I don't know what that refers to. Wattage, 900. Right, yeah, of course. Okay, so we will have a closer look at this. Let's see. Yeah, just wanted to uh, quickly show you that. And what we'll be doing is elements in there and uh, elements with new wires. So hopefully we can get a few in there. Yeah, one, two, three. Probably get six on each tray. Don't really need to do that many, but uh, yeah, so that looks absolutely fine. Let's just plug it in briefly and make sure it turns on. Yeah, so and away it goes. Uh, yeah, it's got an alarm there because the door's not shut. gone now and that's oh no the alarm's still on there uh, well we're gonna have to read the instructions I think but overall it looks absolutely fine I'm sure they really needed to bother with a inspection door very thin bit of uh, glass in there but you can see that top tray through I assume it's the top tray is it let's have a look no it's the bottom tray you can actually see so that might be quite useful just to keep an eye on the process as we work out times and soak durations and things like that so uh, yeah uh, just the first look at that kiln I shall leave the links uh, in the description so back again and uh, just reading through the instructions and uh, apparently the uh, machine is programmed to run a uh, drying cycle uh, from the factory. So it is going to go up to 100 degrees, if I can find the right page. Uh, yeah, originally a brand new programmable kilns controller is already pre-settled, oh, sorry this is Chinglish, at 100 degrees C for 10 minutes uh, on the factory for chamber drying purposes. If the required temperature is different you can preset it yourself at any time in the future. Uh, so yeah, you've got to close the cover here, cover up the top with that little ceramic piece and it is going to slowly ramp up to 100 degrees and uh, dry out the uh, insides and burn off any oil that sort of thing uh, it also recommends that if you do not use this very often that you dry it out uh, with this program uh, first uh, once it has been dried out you can get on with your normal programming now, it's been a few years since I've needed to use uh, one of these. I had, I've, I've got one here. Actually, I've got a Rex C100 and some solid-state relays. I've just also popped the cover off here. You can undo some screws at the bottom and the back, and you can gently pull the metal cover back. Uh, you may need to loosen the glands holding the cables in place and just slip the cables through those glands just to allow a bit more access. And then carefully check all of the screws I found, uh, you know, the connections. I found quite a few uh, cable connections were loose. Uh, thanks to Kev for... Uh, pointing that out he had the same issue on uh, his now 
if this is correct that will now sit at that 100 degrees and not go up any further uh, so that is working out of the box exactly as the instructions have stated and uh, so we've got set value process value uh, apparently you can ignore these alarms uh, here uh, the only one that really matters is this top one that is flashing every time that flashes that it shows that heat's being applied uh, to this uh, so yeah I don't know whether you get a count well, I know you're not going to get a countdown after it's hit the 100 degrees I think the time is just set and uh, that will be that eventually it will go off and what did I say it was 10 minutes Just feel a little bit of heat now at the top, but uh, yeah, not not very much heat at all. A couple of welds here. You might want to let me just bring this up a bit. A couple of welds here are quite sharp. You might want to just run a Dremel over them and just buff out those really sharp uh, edges that have been left there. Don't know why they couldn't have done that themselves looks like they have in other places but uh, perhaps not so much on there so yeah working as uh, expected at the moment don't think there's any way of uh, bringing up any other information like how long it's got to go or stuff like that uh, that is the step number that it's on so step one I guess is bringing up to the 100 degrees step two will be the soak period step three will be the cool down period so uh, yeah, I don't think we can do anything with that I don't know what that is 100 degrees So certainly it is working. We are not getting much in the way of fumes coming off of it. I probably wouldn't at 100 degrees. I suspect we'll get those at the uh, higher temperatures. And uh, by the time we are using this at higher temperatures, we will have the new uh, fume extraction system here and, uh, and working. So uh, yeah nice basic uh, kiln and uh, it was 317 delivered uh, so you know not too bad if it does the job and I already know it will uh, it's just a question of a bit of practice and getting the right flux and uh, silver solder and uh, yeah we will hopefully have a, a more reliable an improved way of getting nickel wires soldered onto elements uh, with the uh, obviously the far better silver solder uh, rather than our high temperature solder that we uh, currently use generally so yeah first look at that links will be in the uh, description so just wanted to show you the ramping down uh, part of this so it's attained 100 degrees for 10 minutes in this default program and uh, if we look it is now on to step number three and uh, actually that go if you leave it a few seconds that uh, will just disappear and go back to the temperatures there we go and you can see the set value is uh, dropping very slowly and the process value is uh, is coming down accordingly so it's probably going to take uh, 20 or 30 minutes to come back down after that we should uh, be safe to um, to go at the higher temperatures although probably wouldn't hurt to run it up to two three hundred uh, degrees uh, you know as a soak period just to make sure but uh, any moisture should have evaporated at the 100 degree 
mark. Uh, so yeah, very pleased with this and uh, hopefully it will be a very useful addition uh, to the workshop in the future.